thank you, buddy. That's, uh, that was incredible. So proud uh, that you were up here talking about me and um, just amazing the journey that, that we've been on since we were uh, five years old, I believe, we first met and competed against each other. And um, thank you so much for uh, introducing me to this wonderful crowd. And um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit of add on to what Bud talked about and um, share a little bit about him too and um, our journey together and my journey throughout my, my life and my career. Um, so bear with me, just, I'm not a great speech writer, but, uh-oh, uh what I do with those? <laughs> Hold on. I guess I'll have to do my best here. It's, I know, it's in my other jacket. Where is it at? Some young lady took off with it. <laughs> you got it? This is what happens when you get older. I can still see 10 miles, but I can't see right in front of my face. Um, I'm so very thankful for such a great honor. And being remembered for my past achievements is a true blessing by the Dallas Stars and the inducti induct induction committee. Thank you very much for this great honor. The Dallas Stars is all, and always has been a first class organization paying tribute to former Stars players in the past and to Hitch and I with this prestigious Hall of Fame induction means the world to me and my family. Thank you to Tom Gillardi, Brad Alberts, Dan Stuckel, uh, the Dallas Stars Foundation, and the rest of the organization for this wonderful celebration and honor. My glory days were at a peak here in Dallas. I look back and feel so blessed to have put on a Stars jersey and achieved the ultimate goal, winning the Stanley Cup in 99, celebrating with an amazing team, family, friends, and our fans is something I'll cherish forever. I miss the excitement, the anticipation, the preparation for game night, and playing in front of you great fans. I know a lot of you are here tonight, and I thank you all from the bottom of my heart for all those years of support and excitement. I'm so thankful to Bob Ganey for bringing me to Dallas. That was all up in the air. Um, I was traded from the Chicago Blackhawks uh, in 97, January 26th, and um, had some injury problems going on and uh, didn't end up signing with the, the San Jose Sharks. Couldn't come to an agreement. Uh, injuries are a part of the game. You have to learn how to get around them. Um, we worked hard at that, Bud and I. Uh, that's when I first learned about Pilates. Pilates made a huge difference for my career, which took me through another many years in, in a Stanley Cup. Um, a lot of people didn't know what Pilates was back then, but Bud found it, and I started uh, becoming a Pilates master. So <laughs> that's one of the things we did behind the scenes. But. Um, Where was I? I'm sorry, guys. Yep, thank you, guys. Sorry. I usually don't write a speech. I usually just get up here and start winging it, but sorry about that. I want to make sure I don't forget all the people that helped me and the things that were really important to me. Um, I spent hours on this thing, so someone's going to have to train me a little bit better. Maybe Marty? Um, I'm so thankful 
Um, for Bob, sorry, that's right, for bringing me to Dallas and masterminding our amazing team. Thanks to Mr. Hicks and, fa and his family for bringing the stars to Dallas and supporting Bob's and our mission. Thanks to all my teammates and trainers who helped me be the best I could be. Thank you to the great fans here in Dallas and across the country supporting us every night. The Eddie Eddie chant and my favorite, Eddie's better when we put Patrick Waugh and, and the Avs in the ground. <laughs> then on to win the cup. Love it forever and thank you so much for that support. To me, there's no secret in my mind to winning. It's whether you're committed and willing to sacrifice everything to be a winner is the difference. You train, you eat, you dream, and have faith for the mission of hoisting the Stanley Cup. What are you willing to do to be the best? This is what our 99 Stanley Cup team had and brought to the rink every day. True to the mission, this is the precise message that Bob Ganey expressed to all of us first training camp as a star. Bob says, anyone who doesn't want to buy into playing a tough defensive system and our mission of winning the Stanley Cup or has a different agenda, please come see me after. I loved every word he said. Thanks, Bob. Thank you, Hitch, Rick, and Jarv for pushing us to be better every day, never settling for second best, and for believing in me. That meant the world. Thank you, Soup, and the rest of the trainers for getting me prepared for every game and through some tough times with my back. Mary, Rudy, John, and Angie, also for behind the scenes support and memories. Love you all and thank you. I wouldn't have any of this if it wasn't for mom and dad's support and guidance. I'm so happy they could be here tonight. They don't travel so well. So thank you, mom and dad, for being here and making the trip. They've been my biggest fans and always there to pick me up when things are a little off. They have been my rock and inspiration to always stay grounded and good to others. I love you, Mom and Dad, and thank you so much. I want to thank my kids, Dane, Reagan, and Adler for supporting me, and for all my dogs who are in doggy heaven now but gave me unconditional love. Those of you who know me, I, I love dogs. My dog would probably be sitting here right now. I also want to thank my girlfriend, Jody for all your love and support over the years in helping prepare for this special evening. Jeff Friesen, for all your years of loyalty and, fr and friendship, and Jeff Chapman, helping get mom and dad here. Thanks, guys. Ron Seltzer, my agent, and his lovely wife, Loie, are here tonight. Thanks so much for being here and always being in my corner. Everything good in my NHL career began when I met you, Ronnie. Ronnie was the voice of reason and the positive reinforcement I needed to help propel my career for the next 20 years. We have achieved so much together, and I'll always be so thankful for all of, our, all of your great advice and friendship. Thanks, Ronnie and Loie. Love you guys. Carmen Manitoba. Carmen Manitoba minor hockey days and playing the game for bragging rights. Carmen is a small farming town in Manitoba with a population of around 2,500. We are a very competitive little town with great hockey leadership in Frank McKinnon, Brian Parker, Ernie Sutherland, Pat Andrews, and Bob Leslie, and many others. They instilled and fueled my inner desire to win at all costs, and I loved that. Yes, the days of my youth hockey with my good friend Buddy Voth and others are something dear to my heart and the foundation of my career. One of my favorite youth hockey photos I've taken along with me throughout my journey is of Buddy, our teammates, and Coach Donnie Walker 
after losing a tournament's final game. Everyone in the photo is pissed off at the world, captured how much we all hated to lose. I carry that memory and hate to lose attitude in my soul today and will forever. It's that attitude which has driven me to the successes in my career and led to this great honor I'm receiving tonight. Mom always told me, Eddie, you can achieve whatever you set your mind to doing. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Carmen, and everyone there that helped me and supported my mission. Thanks, Buddy, for our friendship, loyalty, and helping me achieve the Stanley Cup. I'll never forget Buddy yelling, we've got the cup, we've got the cup. <laughs> that was an amazing moment for both of us. Buddy and I have known one another since grade school, as you found out earlier. Enjoying wins and losses over the years and growing up in Carmen, a great place to develop into strong young men. We enjoyed a high school championship together and were both top athletes in most sports. Bud went on to a successful running career, setting many records. I have to share a story about Bud. And if, that, if this story I'm gonna share with you didn't take place, I wouldn't be standing here tonight. He didn't tell this story. <laughs> it goes back to high school and me not making the high school team, which was devastating to me at the time. I played with the same team since I was five years old. All the same fellas, same team, same coaches pretty much. And now I was cut from the, that team with all the guys I grew up with. The coach at the time didn't see my potential and maybe thought the other two goalies were better than I. At that point, I, I became part of the cheerleading squad, which wasn't so bad because the girls were fun and of course cute. I wanted to do whatever I could to be part of the team, meanwhile never giving up on sharing my dream of playing in the, in the NHL one day. Some kids would of course laugh and say, well Ed, you can't even make your high school team, so how are you gonna play in the NHL one day? So this is where Bud comes in. He and two of, of the other teammates from the high school hockey team, our Cougars, and two of the cheerleaders, were participating in a 24-hour band concert school activity raising funds for charity. While they had a break, they decided to have a few beers on school property and were caught by a teacher who reported them to our principal, Frank McKinnon. The head coach of the hockey team wanted the boys kicked off the team for the rest of the year. Well, Frank was not having that because Bud and the other two players were key players on the team and were needed to help us, help us win. The head coach, the one who cut me, is not happy, of course, and says to Frank, well, if you're not going to kick the boys off the team, then I resign. Frank takes over the coaching duties for the rest of the year. Bud and the boys are a positive in impact for the remainder of the season and help the team make it to the finals against our arch rivals, the Winkler Zodiacs. The best of five series, and we lose the first two games. And remember, I'm on the cheerleading squad at this point. What happens next is nothing short of a miracle. Down in the series, 2 nothing. Buddy tells me the story that Frank comes into the locker room and says, boys, we're in a tough spot here, but we've still got a chance if we don't give up. We're going to make the change in goal and play Ed Belfour. But he hasn't played a game all year, one of the players pleads. Don't worry about that, Frank says. Just worry about competing and Ed will do the same. Frank comes to me later that day and tells me the great news that I'm starting the next day. I was so happy and pumped, I went straight to the gym and started getting, re getting ready mentally, never forgetting what my mom always preached. Eddie, you can do whatever you put your mind to doing. I had my mind set I was going in the net to put on a clinic. I was on a mission to prove to everyone who doubted me that I could be a champion. I stood on my head stopping everything and the team rallied around me the next two games forcing the final game for the championship. We were tied 1-1 with six minutes left in the game and were called for two minor penalties, losing the game 2-1. We gave it our best and fell a little short and I always wondered where that ref was from. 
We were shedding tears in the locker room after the game. Frank came in telling us how proud he was coming back like that as we did, shedding tears himself. It meant the world to me at that moment that I was part of a team and I contributed to something so special and meaningful to all of us. We played with all of our hearts and played for the love of the game. None of that moment or my career or standing here right now would have happened if Bud and his teammates weren't caught drinking on school property that night. <laughs> The rest is history, and Bud and I went on together winning the Stanley Cup here in 99. <laughs> Thanks, Bud, and I love you so much. Another part of my career, a big part of my career, came from the success, from the culture, and the experiences I had at the University of North Dakota in 86, 87, with the fighting Sioux, my, my alma mater. My coaches, Gino Gasparini, John Marks, Dean Blaze, and Kerry Eads, ingrained the details needed to be a champion, which I loved. My teammates and I went 40 wins, eight losses that year, winning the NCAA championship. The dream team, they called us to this day. I'm still, to this day, in touch with those teammates on a weekly basis, sharing the highs and lows of life. Love you guys. Tony Herkus, our stud forward for the Sioux, went on to have a great NHL career, played a big part here with the Stars, winning the cup together in 99. We were like the dynamic duo. Thanks, Herc. I love you, brother. Thanks to Ralph Engelstadt for the state-of-the-art arena that I played in. Then he decided to do something even better. He built the the new real Ralph Engelstad Arena at UND, and is second to none. The Sioux will always be in my heart and soul forever. Thanks, guys. I love you all. Go Sioux, of course. I will never forget that, and I'm not going to say North Dakota. It's the Sioux. <laughs> Thanks to all my teammates and close friends who traveled along long distances to be here tonight for supporting and celebrating this great honor with me. Special thanks to Vladislav Trechak, who couldn't be here tonight, for all the coaching he did for me, the tricks of the trade, of the position that gave me an edge over the rest. I love you, my buddy. He always tells me that. There are so many people that helped over the years, and I'm thankful for every one of them and their friendships. Thank you to all the loyal Dallas Stars fans. I love you all. Most of all, I want to thank God for everything he's given me. And go Stars. You guys got a great team here. You got a great coaching staff. Pete, thanks so much for letting me do the lineup last night. That was a great win. And thank you all for this wonderful even evening. Thank you, Gillies. Thanks, Marty, the foundation. I love being part of it all. I love being here. Every time I'm part of a Dallas Stars event, it, it gives me chills, and I just love everyone. Thank you so much. One more Eddie chant. It's oh. a nice way to close things out. That's pretty good. Eddie's always going to be better. Yeah. Huh?